mean, let's, let's throw to you now, Dominique. It, 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 it is potentially a when, not if. I think we have to be putting our minds towards whether we agree with, you know, with what Boris did or not, whether we're angry about it or not. If the prime minister is found to have broken the law, he's in a very difficult position. So surely we now need to start looking at, well, what happens next? Who would you like to see at the helm of the Conservative Party if Boris goes? Well, none of them. And, and if it were to be someone, it would probably be someone like Mark Harper, like Steve Baker, any one of the Conservative MPs that have um, spoken up against the direction of the government in terms of COVID restrictions. But the likelihood of that happening is virtually nil. Um, I think especially for the country as well, if anyone in cabinet were to take the helm, um, as Conservative leader, if Boris were to resign, the opinion of the country would be that the, the whole lot of them are completely toxic. So regardless of who it would be, the inevitability would be um, a general election. And, you know, that would be a gift to Labour, essentially. That would be a victory for them, because what they essentially want is for the Prime Minister to resign and for there to be another general election where they can stand on a moral pedestal, essentially. Um, my fear was that with that is... Judging by, you know, how Welsh Labour has behaved, for example, with COVID restrictions, um, a lot of the time um, putting them in place prematurely, we'd be in lockdown within a click of a finger. And where Boris is concerned, I think it's clear he is very sceptical of continuing on with um, COVID restrictions. He's set to remove all of them on the 26th of January. So, yeah, I think it's the better, it's better the devil you know for now.